So I was cruising around the internet a few months ago and came across a great idea. It's an SCBA mask, it's a supply air mask. There's industrial ones, firefighters use them in you know industrial plants or commercial settings, but they're really quite expensive. Um, I tried a few different masks. I bought one mask with the Scotto Vista uh, mask, which is not this one. And they're pretty pricey. They're a firefighter spec mask and some of the costs are pretty high, especially if you want to get a new one. Um, I, I bought a, a used one. Unfortunately, the um, the the glass was really badly scratched and you know it, it wouldn't be enjoyable to work with uh, in a shop. So I did some more searching and I came across this mask. Um, I'll put the name of it up on the screen. Um, it's not you know as airy like the Scotto Vista is really quite a nice fitting mask with the the mesh and the and the straps and that. Um, you know it's, it's made to have a helmet on top etc. This mask um, a bit more on the budget commercial side I guess. It's fairly light, it's not too bad. Um, it cost 100 bucks, it was brand new. The glass is perfect on it. Um, it had a lot of extra stuff for, you know, the, the, on the front where the hose comes off or filter canisters, etc. Uh, some pretty heavy duty gear actually for it. Uh, I had um, the, the face, like the nose mouth mask on the inside. Uh, I was able to strip that stuff out pretty easily actually. Um, so anyways, what I did is I, I stripped the mask down. I got rid of everything that you know, I wasn't going to need or want. Um, I made it so that on the inside, you, know, you got lots of room with your mouth and your face. If anyone's ever worked for any period of time with a, a respirator on, it can get pretty old in a hurry. Um, the front had a big hole in the front for um, for a clip-on uh, respirator or canister t style. I got rid of that. I just cut a piece of uh, flat aluminum, siliconed it down, sealed it up, and I took one of the vents that was on the inside mask part. Um, and made it fit, which wasn't very hard actually. The uh, the front of this, so this is where the air comes out when you when you exhale. And actually, the, there's enough positive pressure in the mask that this does end up having a little bit of uh, uh, venting action as well if it's sealed really well on your face. Um, yeah, and when you're breathing out, it opens up like you don't feel like you're breathing any any of your you know expelled air back into your face at all. Uh, it's really quite nice. I, I was testing it out. I worked for about 45 minutes in my shop, just doing odds and ends and and, and everything, and it was nice and actually refreshing. I really quite enjoyed it. Um, the hose, I went with a different type of hose. I had a really heavy duty hose on it. Um, I just went for a CPAP machine. You look on eBay, people that have sleep apnea and, and other breathing issues in the evenings, uh, a lot of them have um, tubings and stuff like that on the internet. It's cheap. Like I got this tube for like three bucks or something like that. It was even delivered to my door for free shipping or something. It was ridiculously cheap. So uh, just look around. You'll find stuff like that. I'm sure you can even find it in a in a local um, uh, home health care place or whatever. Um, for filter and box wise, I picked up uh, just a Hammond enclosure box. Uh, typically these are like console type boxes that you know, prototypes you can do, you know, put con you know controls and stuff like that. Um, I used, like I said, the Hammond box. If I find the model number, I'll post it up. And I wanted to make this, you know, fairly light, self-contained, very easy to do, but I also wanted to get a filter. Um, you don't really need a huge filter. The airflow that you're going to be putting through this isn't very big. Um, I wanted something, obviously, is going to get the micron level down a fair bit. Uh, but one of the most important things is I wanted something that in a year from now or three years from now, uh, if my father wants to change the filter because it's got plugged up or damaged or anyways, that it was, you know, you can get a new one. It's not going to be something that, oh my God, where do I get this now? And, and you're, you're screwed. What it is, it's actually a filter for a Briggs & Stratton lawnmower. <laughs> They've been around forever and I guarantee that this filter is going to be around. Um, so yeah, I'll... Uh, Go over a few things here and then I'll open up and show you the inside. Um, I put a two axial fans in here which you'll see and I put a high low switch. So it's got two levels of air. Um, it's also got a onboard charging. So even when it's on if I plug the charger in it'll shut off and it'll charge the battery. Of course you'll see that inside. I do have the luxury of having my own CNC milling machine so I just made my own air fitting that the mask can plug onto onto your back, uh, but I'm sure you can find something to make it work. I mean, it's, it's not rocket science. 
Uh, I just went to pick up a, a strap, a buckle, riveted some plates on the back. This fits right in the, the small of your back. Really quite comfortable, actually. And I'll show you the inside here. Okay, inside of it. I just machined out the existing back plate and I made a surrounding plate to sandwich the filter. It's got a nice little rubber seal so it actually seals very quite nicely. Pleated filter, not sure exactly what the micron level of filtration is going to be but it's going to be pretty good actually. Um, I'd be surprised if it's not. I went with a uh, 6 volt 1.4 amp hour uh, battery. The reason for using this was well, one for size but the second one is um, these axial fan motors, they draw 0.23 amps each. Uh, if you do the math, I mean, you're going to get like six hours of use out of this thing before having to charge it. Um, probably quite a bit more than that, to be honest. Basic wiring, um, the basics of it are, are not that hard. Both wires are, are wired in parallel. Um, the only difference is I wired in a Zener diode uh, to one side of the switch, so that when the switch is in low, um, it's only going to see like, I think, I think I put a 3.3 uh, volt Zener diode through it. I mean, it's not exactly half speed, but it does reduce um, the speed of the fans. Um, the airflow is different. I, I find it's actually good on the low speed. Uh, on high speed, it was refreshing, but low was just as good. I uh, put an onboard uh, power jack, and I just picked up. Uh, this isn't just a standard wall wart. This is actually a... Um, charger it's you know a proper charger for for batteries um, this one is dual voltage 6 volt or 12 volt uh, it's rated up to 800 milliamps um, even on the the 400 milliamp range I mean I had it I drained the battery not drained it but I had it running all day to see how long kind of the lifetime would be I mean it only took a couple hours to, to recharge it so that was good so pretty basic, there's nothing really overly complex about the design of it. Um, nice and small, I mean I, I sealed the, the fan in. Ideally having the battery in where your air supply is isn't technically the best idea in the world. Because um, there's something ever happened, you're actually blowing it straight into your face. I know that, I mean the, the chances of something happening are pretty small. Uh, and you're going to know right away if something goes wrong. But um, maybe redesign it, I could totally seal the battery out of the compartment. Probably be a good idea. So yeah, that's the basics of it. So fairly light and small, it fits in the small of your back, doesn't really move around, bounce around very much, it's a nice size. Mask itself. And just flick the switch. And you have splire 